the people, for the people. Cluster FM 96.6. If you just uh, join us, welcome to the GFM Sports Cafe live and local 24 7 365. Now, if you were listening to the show last weekend, we had in the house uh, the Bulldog, who is part of the guys who are taking part in the wrestling rampage at GL1 next weekend. And um, he is going to be taking part in that as a tag team with the guy that is called. Do you remember? No, you don't remember. Which is why we've set you guys uh, a quiz to, so that you can win the two tickets to the Wrestling Rampage. But we've got Danny Boy Collins in the house. Hello, Danny Boy. How are you, sir? Hey, man. Good, thank you. How are you and your posse? Not too bad. It's nice to have you on the lines. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to join us here. Yeah, uh, pleasure. Always a pleasure. So, you're looking forward to next weekend, then? Oh, it's going to be fantastic. It's always a good night there, GL1. Uh, people at Gloucester are always great. Uh, we're hoping for a really good, uh, you know, good, really good turn up, and it's going to be a good night. Yeah, fun for all. Now, you you debuted in 1983 as a professional. May you please take us briefly on your journey towards your debut? Okay, you made me feel really old. That's going to be. <laughs> <years this year. laughs> I just suddenly feel like a pensioner. Um, yeah, well, wrestling's changed a lot over the years. You know, like you say, I started in '83, and um, I did five years amateur before that. Um, you know, there were some great characters around. Television was on those days, Saturday afternoon, 4 o'clock. You know, the year of Big Daddy, Giant Haystacks, um, all the household names that people remember. Um, and my career has just been amazing. I've loved every single minute, you know, and uh, I've had all sorts of injuries and uh, mayhem along the way, but, but I've, had, I've had the best time of my life. And like I say, it'll be 30 years next year, and it's just been an amazing career taken me all over the world, met loads of different people, different cultures. It's just been the most amazing job. Well, it's not even like a job, you know, I just really enjoy it, but I get paid for it as well. Yeah, sounds good. You then became a TV star featuring in the ITV's World of Sports, and in 1984 you avenged your TV debut defeat to uh, Jim Brakes. Yeah. What was it, what was it like, uh, oh, you, you oh. winning and knowing that the world was witnessing your comeback? and to top it all, winning the British welterweight title? Well, I was terrified, to be honest with you. <laughs> and, um, I was 16 years old. I'd only just, just left school. Um, in actual fact, I was 15 when I first turned pro. And uh, I moved, you know, one day I was in school, and the next day I was living in a, a bed set in Brixton in London. Um, and, you know, I was just this teenage kid, and suddenly I was thrown in the ring with this, um, with this superstar that I'd seen all over the world. And... Um, some of the guys I'd admired all my life, you know, and, and I'd been to shows to watch them, and suddenly I was in the ring with them, you know, and, and I was up against Jimmy Brakes, um, one of the most formidable villains in, in, you know, in British wrestling. And there I was, 16 years old, about nine stone wet through, absolutely terrified, but, um, you know, I had to stand up to it, and, and, and that's exactly what I did, and I eventually won the championship from him. Now, the welterweight title wasn't your uh, only accolade. You also won the European welterweight championship, yeah, uh, the British heavyweight, the British heavy middleweight championship, uh, British light heavy middleweight, and the British middleweight championship to prove what you're worth. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I've had, I've had, a, I've had a great career. You know, I, I really have. And I, to be honest, wrestling was all, all I ever wanted to do, and a wrestler was all I ever wanted to be. And um, and I trained really hard for it. And, and like I always gave my career, I still do give my career 100 percent. Um, it means everything to me in my, <clears throat> my career. I've been very, very lucky. Um, but I've earned, I've earned it. You know, it's not all been luck. I've earned it. And, and, um, and I've come through a lot of battles, you know, some that people would say I didn't have a chance in. And, um, you know, I've really had to prove myself in the wrestling business. And I've done, I've done that. Now, uh, you, you invented the, the escape from, from the cartwheel. Yeah. Now, it just made me wonder, did you actually work towards achieving that or you discovered it by chance? Um, no, a lot of things I discovered by chance. You know, I, I always took a different approach to wrestling. I, I love some of the scientific stuff, but I also love some of the high-flying stuff that you see, you know, around the world. And I sort of made a combination of the two and made it my own style. And um, I think that's what made me so different. You know, I was young and I was talented. And... Um, and now I'm old and talented. <laughs> <laughs> and wise. 
Yeah, but uh, but you know, like I said before, it's not an easy career. People think it's dead easy, you know, and it's not. Especially in my day, you had to train very very hard to make it even into the business. And um, and of course, I was fighting six, seven nights a week. We were traveling all over the UK and the world. Um, so you were very tired, you were very worn out, um, but you just had to keep in your mind that you've got to train, you've got to stay fit, you've got to perform, and at the end of the day, you're a professional, you know, and you have to do what's, uh, what the people are paying to see you do. So now, uh, something I found quite interesting about you was um, you going into, your feud, into a feud with uh, your own brother, Peter Collins, just because you were at different camps of the wrestling. Was that feud, was that feud purely professional? Uh, and it didn't affect you guys sitting um, at the table Christmas lunch with the family? <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't like that. I mean, my, my brother and I had two totally separate careers. And like I say, I left home um, when I was 15 and, and my brother had already, already left home at that time. Um, so we were living in different parts of the country anyway. But um, we always got on really well and we actually started out as a tag team. Um, I think, in fact, we were the only tag team from the southwest at that time. And, um, you know, and eventually, like any family, you know, we have fallouts. And, um, and that's what happened, you know, things just didn't work out between us and we had fallouts. And it just happened that every now and again, you don't get to choose who you wrestle with. You know, and now and again, um, Pete would be up against myself, you know, for my championship belt. And, and, and that's just the way it happened. And when you get in the ring, you're professional. You want to defend your championship and do the best you can. So, so that's how it happened. So he, he, got, he, got, his, he got his ass kicked by his little brother. <laughs> See, now we, we had the pleasure of uh, the Bulldog's presence last weekend like I mentioned earlier yeah. and um, he mentioned during the show that he got into wrestling through you uh, you know basically he, he got into, into the you inspired him to get into the sport and that proved to all of the sports cafe listeners that you, uh, you have been a positive role model otherwise as the English Bulldog put it in his own words you might have probably ended up in prison. So how does it make you feel knowing that you've actually managed to inspire a young man and turn him into, into a man? I'm, I'm really, really pleased for Matt. I, I mean, I, I do genuinely like the guy. I think he's got, um, he's got a great way about him and a real natural approach. Um, and for me to, you know, if, if my wrestling inspires other people, um, then that, that's brilliant. You know, I, I love to see new guys coming into the business and I always try and help them the best way I can because I remember what it was like for me when I first came in. It was tough, you know, I'd go home battered, I'd go home bruised, I'd go home with broken bones, you know, blood all over the place. And, and sometimes it's really hard to get up the next day and get that drive to get back into the ring. But I know Matt's got that, you know, Matt has got that drive. Um, and I know he works really, really hard for the people of Gloucester to make sure they have the best show possible there. And, um, you know, next Saturday is going to be no exception. It's going to be a fantastic show. Um, and I always help Matt as much as I can. You know, we've got some terrific lineups this year. We've got people coming in from all over the world. Um, and it's going to be a fantastic year for British wrestling, especially at Gloucester. And Matt deserves it, to be honest. And I, and I really hope he gets the support of the people. Um, it's looking that way already. I mean, tickets are going really well. And we just want to see a really packed house there like it used to be years ago. So when you do get this packed house you're hoping for, what should the fans expect? I mean, what exactly is going to be unique about GL1 Wrestling Rampage? Okay, they, um, they can expect to see the best of, of British and international professional wrestling. Um, they can see a combination of uh, the, the glitz and the glamour that they like from the American scene, um, you know, um, combined with British wrestling, which is, which is known throughout the world to be the best in the world. I mean, I've wrestled all over the world, and trust me, everybody that I've been in the ring with just says British wrestling is the best, and I will absolutely stand by that. It is 100% the best. Um, so they can expect a fantastic night. They can expect value for money. It's also family entertainment. You know, you can take your kids along. It's not an expensive night, and the kids can have a fantastic night. And trust me, if they like American wrestling, when they come along next Saturday, the children will absolutely love the show. I mean, I've been doing this 30 years. I know exactly what the business is all about. And I've seen hundreds and hundreds of thousands of kids go away absolutely delighted after a great night. So, yeah, next Saturday is going to be something really special for all the wrestlers and for all the fans that come along. That's brilliant. But one last question before I let you go. Okay. We've just received a, a message into the studio coming from the Highlander from Hell. Who would that be? Drew McDonald? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, he's coming to the studio next weekend before he fights, um, uh, uh, who's he fighting, Flash Bracker? Yes. 
and he claims that he is 300 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. Is that true? <laughs> I guess everybody's got their uh, opinion. Uh, he must have a twisted mirror that he looks in every morning. <laughs> Perhaps a twisted man's got a twisted mirror. <laughs> 300 pounds of a man dressed in lycra, especially if it's pink, ain't my cup of tea, baby. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> everybody, everybody is to their own, you know? He's to their own, but, uh, I prefer my ladies in there like her, you know? A 300-pound man with a hairy back isn't my idea of uh, <laughs> twisted steel and sex appeal. I don't know about you guys. Oh, so that, guys so that, in the studio there, you have a vote. So that's going to spice things up for next week, then? <laughs> <laughs> ladies, I assure you, there are some sexier guys on the bill. If you're, if you're put off by a 300-pound guy, guy, guy with a hairy back in like her, come on and see the other guys. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he's got his own opinions, but it's going to be a great night. And, guys, I, I really hope you can make it along because, um, you know, some of you may not have seen the British wrestling, and, and I assure you, you know, it's something really to see. So, um, you know, get yourselves along, too. I believe DJ H is going to be there, so it's going to be a good night. Um, awesome. Hey, uh, my name's Henry. Um, Hi, Henry. Hello. Uh, I, so, you're a strong guy, yeah? Yeah, I like to think so. Okay. Um, so, I, I'm, I'm quite a skinny person, actually. Okay. Um, so how would you recommend I would become, get into this wrestling business if I wanted to become a wrestler like you? Well, it's, you know, somebody said to me years ago, and I've always stuck by this, somebody said it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. You know, and that's true. It doesn't matter whether you're 8 stone or 18 stone. You know, if, you, if your heart's in it, you'll get there. I was, I was like you, I was 9 stone when I started, you know, and, you know, I was white and pasty, I just left school. Um, but you got to you got to get that dedication. Get yourself Ooh, to the I gym. I think I'm around nine stone. Oh, yeah, get yourself to the gym, man. Don't spend so many nights out on the booze. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Eat, eat, eat. You probably don't eat well. You don't sleep very much. You don't. You drink too much. Am I right? Uh, actually, no. I, I get I get enough sleep. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Two hours is enough for you. It's worth getting along next Saturday. I'll get there an hour early and I'll show you a few tricks of the trade. Thank you. <laughs> So we so we have one of our college parties uh, taking some lessons in wrestling very very soon. That'll be interesting. Yeah, yeah that'll be good. Uh, one, one question for me. This is Roderick. Um, um, when I was just thinking, what's what would you say was one of your worst um, injuries you've had to, throughout your career? I've been extremely lucky. I've broken, um, I've broken just, well, this doesn't sound very lucky, but I've broken practically every bone in my body. Crikey. I've never had anything that's stopped me wrestling. You know, I'm, I have a really high pain threshold. Um, just this week, I've gone to have four um, injections in my spine um, for my lower back. Um, but you'll see me next Saturday, you know, once I get in that ring and my music starts. I'm like a teenager that's had too many E-numbers, you know. No, I <laughs> get in there, do my job. But I remember wrestling one night, I had two ruptured discs, two <clears> broken <throat> ribs and a dislocated thumb. Crikey. And I drove down to Brighton on my own and defended my championship. Cry. Oh. Goodness you know, gracious. That's, that's what the people don't see, you know. They, they don't see us in the ring injured and they don't see us driving home two, three hundred miles, maybe four, five, six hours afterwards, getting up the next day, going to the gym, doing the same thing the next day. That's what makes us professionals and... And to be honest, we thrive off it and we love it, you know? Crikey, that, that's so, yeah, probably... That, that, gonna, you, you know, you're going to get injured and you're going to get injured a lot, just get used to it. That's probably why I never made a wrestler, because I haven't got that pain threshold. <laughs> <laughs> so when, well, um, when, you had, uh, your, your, when you had your kidney removed, how, how, did that, how much did that affect your wrestling? It didn't affect my wrestling at all, um, Mansu, to be honest. I mean, the, the specialist that took my kidney out said I'd never wrestle again. Um, I was 18 years old, and I had other ideas, you know. That wasn't about to end my career because I had the kidney taken out. You know, and I got straight back in the ring. I think I was about three months, and then I was straight back in the ring wrestling again. And I've had many injuries along the way where people have said, you'll never wrestle again, you know, and, and I prove them wrong every time, and, and I'll keep doing that. Fair you know, I've still plenty of life in me yet, and I have no intention of retiring, finishing. I regularly take training classes to bring on new... Um, new recruits to the business. I was um, I was over training some guys in Norwich um, last weekend. 60 guys turned up for the training school. And uh, we're constantly bringing in new blood into the business. That's good. You That's know, good. we soon sort out the uh, the crybabies from the heroes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we have true. a way of doing that. Yeah, oh, okay. Like, like you said, it's, it's the fight in the dog, not the size of the dog. That's right, yeah. 
It's yeah. the size of the fight in your heart, mate. That's what it's all about. It's like anything in life, isn't it? If you want it bad enough, go True. get it. Nothing standing in your way, only yourself. True. Danny boy, thank you very much for letting us disrupt your weekend, and we hope to see you next weekend uh, in the ring and doing your thing the way you do it best. Cool. I look forward to taking on Henry. Build yourself up, Henry. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you guys. Thank you. Uh, you take care, sir. Bye now. Bye. 96.6, that was Danny Boy Smith. Serving the heart and soul of Gloucester, this is GFM.